Okay, I assume I can start. <laughs> and um, so I'm Igor, I'm a co-founder and VP data in a company named Billy. And uh, I will talk today about uh, prudent data techniques, uh, which I hope will be useful for the first time uh, founders. But before we start, let me tell you a couple of words about Billy. So uh, we founded Billy as a group of friends uh, in 2016. And since then, the company grew to uh, more than 120 employees. Uh, we had a few quite successful uh, uh, investment rounds. And I believe we are on the right track. Uh, what do we do? So our initial product was uh, invoice factoring. It's not something uh, revolutionary. This business model uh, exists since uh, the Middle Ages, but we are trying to do it uh, better, faster uh, than uh, the traditional banks here in Germany. And uh, as I already mentioned that since then our product uh, evolved significantly to a proper B2B payments uh, operating system. Now, let's move to the real content of this session. So let's start with the following example. Imagine that you are working on your product, doesn't matter which product exactly and you are working with your engineering team and engineering team, they come up with a great idea. Why don't we use some kind of fancy message queue system, Kafka based, and we will uh, fire uh, events with, uh, in case of some uh, technical uh, business transactions and every event it will be like a file and all these files will be stored in the data lake. Sounds good, you implement it, you have every day thousands of files created and stored in your data lake, uh, but then you realize that customers actually might come to you and ask uh, to be deleted from your database. And then how do you fish out the, those events from these hundreds of thousands of files? And this is just one example. Because, for example, European Union is quite strict when it comes to where, how, and for how long data, especially sensitive private data, is stored. So before the first line of code is written, the following question should be answered. Do the regulations of my business model constrain me to use a specific cloud technologies? Will I be collecting sensitive private data like uh, email addresses, IP addresses, phone numbers? Uh, assuming that I will be collecting sensitive private data in which geographical locations am I allowed to store it? Or as I already mentioned, how to deal with the requests of clients to erase their data, what's so-called right to be forgotten. And for example, I can tell you honestly that in Billy, we have made uh, a mistake in the beginning because we have chosen a cloud provider uh, based on the technological criteria. We were not thinking about uh, this uh, kind of compliance aspects. And then we have realized that unfortunately we cannot use a specific provider for our purposes because we are regulated by a financial regulator here in Germany. So what we had to do, we had to take all our data and migrate it from provider A to provider B. So it was not an easy effort and I wouldn't wish anyone to, 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 to repeat it. On top of that, uh, in Billy, we also implemented 
a mechanism for deleting clients data upon their requests so it is a simple set of uh, queries more or less which run and they anonymize data which should and which can be anonymized uh, and of course it constantly evolves so my point is that before you write a single line of code it before you create your first table just think twice ask your compliance department if you don't have a compliance department ask your colleagues from other companies uh, uh google it a little bit but just think about uh these aspects because it's very easy to make a mistake and that kind of uh, mistake can be can result in knockout for for your business that <laughs> what i can tell you about this so i am in this uh data domain since 2006 and in 2006 uh world was slightly different because back then when you wanted to build a data warehouse and you wanted to bring data to your data warehouse you were usually uh, using uh, technologies provided by um, microsoft uh, and uh, they had back then sss packages and then you had really plug in table after table and uh, try to correct these data pipelines every time when, when, when they were broken and so on. But luckily, uh, that was back then, it was in 2006, 2008, 2010, the world has changed. And the times when one had to build ingestion or replication data pipelines are over. So if you just want to bring data from uh, google analytics or from facebook or from uh, your production database or from your uh, crm system like uh, salesforce to your data warehouse to some kind of like central place where you store all your all your data and you can analyze it don't spend your time on writing a kind of uh, shaky python script to do so just use existing tools it will make your life so much easier and in Billy, actually, we, we, we experienced this by ourselves that we start with some kind of custom build solution, that kind of script that I mentioned before, and only two years later when it started to be too complicated, when, when, they, were, when they became unreliable, when we had to fix them after every major release, we just realized it doesn't make any sense. It makes sense just to use uh, tools, uh, uh it's their bread and butter data replication it's not our know-how our know-how it's uh, fintech and that's what we should focus on not on the data replication so uh yes don't don't try to build data replication by yourself um uh, so let's say you raise money for your company it doesn't matter uh, what kind of company it is. is it e-commerce or is it uh, SAS provider or I don't know, maybe even uh, uh, food delivery. At the end, significant portion of money which you have raised will go to your marketing budget because you want to make uh, world aware about the fact that you exist. You want to uh, acquire customers. And then you allocate this budget to your marketing department. They configure uh, Facebook or Instagram accounts and start to spend that money. But then how do you know if that money was spent wisely or not? So you have to track uh, uh, your visitors, where do they come from? You have to track up the conversion and you have to be able to to be data driven to analyze actually how much customers did you acquire from specific uh, campaign for example right unfortunately life is more complicated because what happens if for example someone first saw your ad at facebook 
and then later at LinkedIn, and he came first from Facebook, and then again he came from LinkedIn, and finally he saw Edward, and he came from Edward, and only then he completed the registration. So you cannot just say, okay, he came from from Facebook or or, or he came from 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 Edwards because that was the last uh, touch point. I mean, you can, but it wouldn't be smart. So this is what's called attribution model because you are trying to attribute a single convertible, a single customer to multiple uh, channels. Now, in order to do so, of course, you have to have data about these uh, visits. It's not that complicated. I mean, uh, modern tools like uh, Google Analytics, they, they give you that ability uh, to see all the visits at, 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 your, at, at your website, for example. And then when customer completes the registration, and let's say you generate your internal ID, I don't know, number 17, you have to map this internal ID to all the previous sessions of these customers, of previous visits and then you have to attribute these visits uh, based on uh, logic which you choose so for example in uh, billy we have chosen uh, 40 20 40 logic when we say okay we give 40 percent of let's say this conversion to the first touch point we give 40 percent of this conversion to the last touch point and all the touch points in between we give 20 percent and since all the data resides in our data warehouse and we see all the visits and we see all the campaigns using very simple sql okay not very simple using <laughs> not that simple uh sql script we succeed to say okay we give 0.2 of this conversion to this facebook campaign we give 0.3 of this conversion to uh, this uh, instagram campaign for example and this process of uh, improving your efficiency, this process of trying to reduce the cost of acquisition, it's never ending process. And in Billy, it's a joint effort between our marketing department and our data science department. Uh, and I strongly recommend you to start working on your attribution model as uh, soon as possible because indeed it is time and uh, effort uh, well spent so it happens quite often that you have good intentions you want to keep your data clean but some you also want to move fast and break things and when you move fast you break things indeed for example, let's say you have two uh, sales agents in your company and both sales agents, they create two different leads which represent the same business entity if you work in B2B segment. And then uh, one of these leads is converted to a customer. So naturally you attribute this conversion you attribute this customer to specific uh, sales agents who created one lead and uh, you calculate his bonus based on that however the other sales agent might be offended because actually his lead took part in marketing campaigns or another example you might have already existing customer but your sales agents are not aware and if your system allows them to create leads for already existing customers, they will do it because people make uh, mistakes. It's in their nature. My point is that if you can, for example, prevent duplicates from appearing in your CRM, from appearing in your database, do it. Find a way to do it. Sometimes it's quite complicated because, for example, in Germany, we operate in Germany as a company, uh, it's not like in US where every citizen has a unique social security number. No, here they, they don't have kind of like unique identifier per person. Uh, so we have to generate our own unique identifiers for, for our customers. Uh, but we, we have to do it. Another example, 
emails i mean you have to have valid emails in your in your database because otherwise your emails will 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 uh, bounce and you will not be able to create proper uh, marketing campaigns and all the things it's much more complicated to fix them when you already have uh, data which is uh, imperfect uh, it's much more complicated comparing to trying to keep your database clean from uh, day one. Uh, and talking about these, uh, for example, unique identifiers, if we're talking about them, it also allows you to run, for example, uh, uh, offline marketing campaigns. So if you say, OK, I create leads with uh, a specific uh, company ID, and then I send uh, physical flyers to my customers, and if customers, they just come to your website and they register and they provide this company ID and then the lead is converted, you can attribute this conversion to uh, this specific campaign based on this unique identifier, which is unique in your whole system. So my recommendation to you, use unique identifiers. You will thank me later. This is the bonus slide where I put the technologies which we use in order to facilitate our uh, data platform. So we use Snowflake. You see, I put Snowflake in, in, in the center as a technology of our data warehouse. Uh, great company, great tool. Uh, they IPO'd, I think, uh, very successfully uh, last autumn. And uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, by the way, I'm not associated in any way with neither of these companies. Uh, <clears throat> segment, I was talking about the uh, online tracking of your visitors. So that's what we do use in segment. For every click at our website, segment reports us about this click. And also segment allows to plug in these events and send them to, to, to Snowflake, Fivetrend. We use Fivetron for replicating data from our production uh, databases to Snowflake, from our uh, uh, Facebook accounts, from our Bing account, from our Google AdWords account, from, uh, uh, I don't know, um, yeah, from, from, from like 10 or 12 various uh, data sources. They have amazing uh, library of connectors. Uh, so this is, for example, uh, you can use this tool if you don't want to build the replication by yourself. And believe me, you don't want to build replication by yourself, as I already said. Uh, Airflow. Airflow, Apache Airflow uh, technology, we use it for orchestrating uh, all these uh, data processes uh, as kind of a conductor. Uh, well, that tool compared to others is more complicated and you have to have uh, real data engineers to, to work with it, uh, but still um, I can recommend it. Uh, DBT, we use uh, DBT for transforming data, which was brought for example by Fivetrend to a multidimensional model inside of our Snowflake. And uh, finally, when the data is uh, ready, it can be uh, visualized using uh, sizes for cloud data teams. It's a visualization tool similar to Looker, similar to uh, to Tableau. Uh, last but not least, uh, Hightech and Muta. So uh, we use uh, Hightech for what's called uh, reverse ETL. It's you have your data in your data warehouse in Snowflake, in Snowflake, and for example, you want to bring some data related to marketing back to your CRM system. Uh, <clears throat> so that's what uh, Hightech is for. And uh, Immuta is uh, used for, it's a data catalog and data governance tool. It helps uh, your users to understand, okay, where so when they 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 open a table i don't know they open table uh customers rating and they see exactly the description of the table the description of, of every column they see where the data is used or for example they can just uh, use a search for saying okay show me all the tables which have anything to do with payments and then they can see it in their 
uh, in this data catalog built by uh, Imuta. Uh, so I exposed uh, all my secrets related to our technological stack. And I believe now we can move to the questions. Thank you, Igor. Thank you. Um, I hope everyone is enjoying this session as much as me. Um, I have one question, Igor. Um, do you have any concrete example of something you learn through data that otherwise you will never have learned by yourself? Um, like an insight about a customer that was very counterintuitive or something that that because of this data infrastructure, you told yourself, oh, that was a good investment. I will never have seen that otherwise. Yes. So it's not data per se, what I'm going to talk about, but still it's another very nice tool. There is a tool named Full Story. Have you ever heard about it, Osama? No. So Full, full Story, it's a tool. You install a tiny JavaScript uh, plugin at your, at your website, kind of uh, JavaScript tracking code. And then you can see the, the like kind of video. It's not really video, but you can see interaction of your customer with your website. And it really helps to understand the barriers which customers have during the onboarding, like when they hesitate, when they do not understand, when they are looking for a button, but they do not find it. And for example, it, it really helps to, to our product team and also to, 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 to myself uh, uh, to, to understand, okay, what can we do better? Like how how can we help our customers to to use our product better? And of course, it's it's not we couldn't find it out even if we use kind of I don't know questionnaire or interviews because during the interviews customers tell you their interpretation of what they believe they saw, but here you actually see what they saw. You 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 see how they interacted with your with your website and. Uh, uh that that was very helpful so uh yeah um can you do you think it's a good idea to test an idea through facebook ads because in your presentation you were seems like you look like okay do all of that when you raise money and you are post product market fit but what do you think about this kind of test before uh product market fit and using ads as a mm -hmm. testing platform uh well depends i mean it's 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 not cheap i mean let's admit the the, the facebook ads they, they they are not cheap so uh i mean it, it it's 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 justified if you have an idea and you have i don't know 500 euros to to spend on it just to see if there is interest if people click on it if people interact with your ad i mean uh uh why not but if you try to uh, to do it with a big uh, audience, then uh, I mean to do it better to do it with investors' money, not with your own <laughs> bootstrapping money. Okay. Uh, what is your f thought about Facebook Pixel? I don't have any thought about Facebook Pixel. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> like, do you, do you, like, do you? No, but I know what is uh, actually the the kind of uh, underwriting question. Um, there's a big debate about click fraud and uh, how much ads are actually true in terms of conversion and cost. Like for example, uh, at Billy, what is your, like, what is your custom, where your customer come from? Are you relying a lot about ads? And if yes, how can you trust the platform and the data they send us? Uh so since we are working in B2B segment and we're working in Germany and Germany is quite conservative mm -hmm. market, <laughs> it's, believe me, it is. So actually our best channels are offline. Uh, we have kind of affiliate partners uh, who do it for us. Uh, we have this offline campaigns, which I mentioned when we send, we print physical flyers, we do it through API. So we send, the data from our CRM to printing house, they print it and they send to, to our potential customers. Now with, with, with Facebook, I mean, 
I, I don't think that there's kind of fraud and I, I, I trust these numbers because it kind of makes sense. We, we can see exactly based on the Facebook reports uh, where, where people, like in which geographies they, 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 they saw our ads, what was our level of interaction. We can also compare it to our comrades from, from other companies. Uh, but Facebook is definitely not one of our primary uh, sources of uh, customer uh, acquisitions but again we work in b2b segment in b2c it can be a completely different story of course yeah um last question and then we we can go to the next session um do you think there is a thing like <clears throat> over data like i know I, I i'm a bit a data nerd like you i always tell entrepreneurs collect whatever you can collect and maybe one day it will be useful. And I know that some people don't like this approach because they say that if you have too much data, you have too much noise. What is your view around that? There is, there is something as too much data or any data collected is cool and maybe one day it will be useful? So, you know what, data, working with data in general is not rocket science you just plug in your data sources right you try to bring as you say osama mm -hmm. all the data you can into your data warehouse so you can analyze it if you want right but then the question whom do you give access to this data so it's fine if uh i know of course data engineers work with with this data but then they have to cook this data you know like and then when it's half baked they have to give it, think about like half baked lasagna. And then they, 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 they give it to your data science team or BI team, because otherwise, if you give access to your raw data to every single analyst in the company, and every single analyst, they try to, you know, like dig into the raw, raw data and they try to interpret it by themselves, that's not what, what, what we do here. So we pre cook data, we show the data which is confirmed and approved. To our analysts, so so kind of like data marts, and there they 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 can work with this data. But in terms of collection, in terms of ingestion data, yes, we try to collect everything what we can. Yeah, cool, Igor. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much uh, for this session, uh, and I hope everyone in in the public enjoy it. Uh, see you soon. See you. Bye bye. The pleasure was mine. Bye. Hey, 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 hey,